Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash and this is episode 96 in the series. Welcome back to the Yarn Room where it's lovely to spend some time with you guys. Uh, if you're coming back, it's great to see you. Thanks for all the messages and the comments and the notes and I've just received so many nice um, little bits of communication from you guys. So welcome back, it's lovely to see you. And if you're new, welcome. This is a podcast mostly about garments garment design, modification, tips, tricks, DIY, all kinds of stuff like that. So yeah, you're in the right place if you like those things. <laughs> uh, so most of you guys who are coming back know I'm a professor at the university here in Urbana, Illinois, and I teach speculative fiction and science fiction and science studies and all that kind of stuff. And the semester has been going very well. I, my students are great and um, things are rolling along and the yarn room has worked out as a classroom. So it feels weird to me still to see this kind of like blank background here um, when I'm filming because it used to have my yarn back there and all kinds of other stuff when my yarn room had to be switched over to a classroom kind of ad hoc last spring. Um, but things are kind of looking up. It's, I'm getting used to it. So I hope you guys are getting used to the new look and uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying <laughs> what you see, as usual. Uh, so what do I have for you today? I have a finished object. This is the Samantha jumper. I'm going to talk all about it because this was quite a trial and error sweater. And I would encourage all of you to have trial and error sweaters. And I'll tell you what that means when we get to that segment. I have a call for designers because dun, da, 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 Shorn 3, my farm to skein yarn has just finally arrived. And this is like your sneak peek. And so I have a call for designers uh, because I wanna work with some designers on patterns for this yarn and I'll put more info up on the blog and everywhere else, but that'll be another segment. I have a giveaway for you guys and yeah, I think that'll kind of round things out for the day because I have a lot to say about this sweater. <laughs> um, so what, oh, I usually tell you where you can find me. So especially if you're new to the cast, you can find me everywhere as Knitting the Stash on YouTube, obviously, Instagram, Ravelry, all those good places by email, knittingthestash at gmail.com. Uh, and then I'm, I also have a blog, which is knittingthestash at dot wordpress.com and I'll put that address down here. That's where I put show notes up. So all the things that I talk about, any of those links will be over yonder. So let's start with the finished object for the week. This is the Samantha Jumper by Willow and Lark. And Willow and Lark is a British company. Uh, the pattern is available via Lovecrafts. It's up on Ravelry, but you can't purchase it there. You have to go through Lovecrafts. Um, and I've put up my project page on Ravelry so that you can see all of my modifications, some of which I've included stitch counts and, and all kinds of other things because the tech specs of this sweater and the way I kind of re-engineered it are kind of wild. Even though this sweater, just at first glance, you'd be like, wow, that sweater looks like the other sweater. What's well, different? <laughs> but a lot of the modifications kind of came on the back end in terms of like how I did what I did and why I did it. Um, so I'll go through some of those. But first I want to show you why I fell in love with this sweater in the first place. Now this is the pattern uh, image, the, the project image that comes up when you see it on Ravelry or you look at the pattern from Willow and Lark over on Lovecrafts. It's a beautiful purple, kind of straight, simple, clean uh, sweater without a lot of, like, I guess what I would say is it's without a lot of, like, frills. It's just kind of nice, clean wearing. And I thought this is something that I would wear a lot and I'm kind of excited about it. So when I did eventually download the pattern, um, probably about a couple months ago, uh, and when I started looking for yarn and things, I noticed that the pattern was actually going to produce a very different sweater than this purple sweater that they advertised. So I'll show you these, this other set of images here. This is what this sweater here, the darker version of this with the what you can see is kind of like puffy hems around the arms and kind of hourglass shaping that goes into A-line shaping. It's just a very loose, drapey, very different silhouette of a sweater. And that is what the pattern is written for. So the pattern is written to produce that sweater, not that purple sweater that you see at the beginning of the pattern. And there's not even a kind of like choose your own adventure. Like if you want it this way, go this way. If you want it this way, go this way, um, which a lot of designers might do because this sweater could be knit in both ways, like with both silhouettes included in the pattern, but that's not how it's written. It's written for the kind of billowy silhouette. And I wanted the kind of straight silhouette. 
So I reverse engineered the pattern, <laughs> and that's what I'm here to tell you about today. It's a kind of trial and error sweater. Normally when I modify patterns, I uh, sit down and do all the math ahead of time, at least up through the armholes, you know, maybe not the neckline until I get there, but yeah, I usually do the math ahead of time because you want to know where you're going and how you're going to modify things and how your later decisions are going to affect your earlier decisions and all that kind of stuff. But with this one, I was I had just been listening to Albina of LB Handknits, and she talks about a kind of growing up with this kind of vernacular knitting knowledge where you, you kind of knit sweaters without patterns. You just kind of go with what you know is going to work and, um, you know, you make some changes along the way. And I thought, you know, I'm tired. <laughs> the day job has taken a little bit of my brain power. Maybe I'll just try a little bit of that. Like, let it just let it go a little bit and know that I've knit enough sweaters to be able to figure this out. Well, that was both good and bad <laughs> because uh, there were some things about this sweater that definitely could have used a little bit of forethought. So it was definitely a little trial and error, but I really enjoyed that because I'm usually such a programmed, patterned, kind of like think ahead, plan ahead kind of person that it w there was something, I don't know, cool about just kind of going with the flow a little bit, like kind of following the pattern in some ways, but modifying it as I went and... There was something also nice about learning as I went. So I think I ripped out this part of the, the uh, upper body and neckline three different times, but I used each time to think about how uh, decreases work and how shaping works and how high a good neckline is for me or for maybe for other people. And it was all really great because I feel like I came away from this sweater knowing a heck of a lot more about how to troubleshoot in the middle of something and how to kind of make choices along the way that, that are going to work out most of the time. <laughs> so I would say trial and error sweater, okay, sometimes. <laughs> all right, let's jump into some of the things that I did. Number one, the sweater was meant to be worked flat and I decided to knit it in the round because with a sweater like this, there's no reason not to knit it in the round, and that will make the color work so much easier mm -hmm. if you're knitting in the round. Uh, if you're knitting a sweater, as I've said on this podcast before, there are reasons for, for seams, right? If you're knitting a sweater out of something like cotton or linen, which has no real elastic memory, or you have a sweater that's heavily cabled and really heavy, then you want to add your side seams and make sure you have your good shoulder seams and, and all that kind of stuff that's going to hold everything together so that it's not like just melting off your body. This sweater didn't need that, so I knit it in the round. I wanted to make sure that I didn't add the billowiness to the pattern. So instead of doing the uh, increases into the color work and then the decreases out of the color work, I just left it like I would normally do with color work. I went up a needle size. So the bottom uh, I had knit in the size four, then uh, the color work I did in the size five, and then I went back to the size four for the main body. Now, <laughs> that worked, um, but there were a couple things here, and it called for ribbing, as you guys might have noticed in the pattern, which I did. I did the, the ribbing. I don't like ribbing. I'm really not a fan of ribbing, and usually if I do add ribbing to my sweaters, I use the same needle size that I would use for the body for the ribbing, because I'm just, I'm... I'm anti-squish around the hips. I don't, I don't want my sweater snagging on my jeans. I just don't like that feeling. So I either don't put ribbing on or I make it kind of bigger ribbing. Well, it just didn't look right in this. The transition with the color work and the ribbing and the ribbing was knit too small and I just didn't like it. So once I had knit the whole sweater, I decided to pull out the ribbing <laughs> and I went back and I knit, uh, I picked up all my stitches and I knit down from there. This is a bottom up sweater. So the rest of it is main body is knit bottom up. But I, like I said, popped the bottom, pulled off the ribbing and uh, kind of added a, so there was a, there's a little bit of wonkiness if you're, if it's a bottom up sweater and you pull off the bottom and you're gonna add something different, you're gonna be knitting in the other direction. If it's stockinette, it's kind of hideable, but you're going to have a half stitch difference. So you're going to see a half stitch difference if you really look at it. Stockinette, you can't tell too much, but if you're uncomfortable with that, you can do other things to kind of lead the eye away. So I decided to add this extra little row of pop of color work in here to kind of lead the eye away from the fact that there's a little half stitch off and uh, I was transitioning into this turned hem rather than the rib and going in the other direction. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is where some of the weird technical details come in, right? So I ended up doing a turned hem 
which I love very much and which makes the all of the color work and the whole sweater just kind of sit a little bit flatter. There's not a kind of cinch in at the bottom. And this was actually inspired by um, a couple of sweaters that I saw over on Instagram. And I'll put those usernames up here. Um, one, the photo I saw was from Lil Frost and she had been test knitting a sweater for another designer and that sweater was similar to this in that it had color work at the bottom and then the color work kind of continued in pops all the way through. But she had a turned hem on the bottom of her sweater and the bottom of her cuffs. cuffs. So I was like, I gotta do it. So that's where the turned hem came in. And I haven't actually washed this sweater yet. I've just steam blocked it. So I just took a wet towel just to see how this hem would work out. Wet towel on both sides, up on an ironing board, a towel underneath, towel on the top, and a hot iron so that the steam from the towel is kind of activated by the iron, the water turns into steam, you know what I mean, steam block it. And that way everything relaxed and I could see that the um, turned hem was actually gonna be okay. It wasn't gonna flare out, it was the right size, everything was good, so I did that. Uh, okay, so like I said, it's a bottom-up sweater and I knit it in the round, so it took a little bit of uh, maneuvering with the numbers to get the right stitch counts and to think about things like armhole decreases and neck and back and splitting and all that kind of stuff. Um, and because of this vernacular knitting thing that Albina had been talking about, um, I, I felt like I could just, I'd done enough sweaters from the bottom up that I could just kind of go for it. Now I did use the patterns, uh, what the pattern called for, for the uh, armhole decreases, and because I was working in gauge for the sweater, those worked out just fine. Now I did rip out, like I said, this <laughs> upper part a couple different times, uh, but I, I finally settled on this particular neckline, which I can show you guys here. Uh, and you can see the decreases running here and the decreases kind of running over here. These middle stitches were uh, just live and held on waist yarn. And that way when I went back in to add this funnel neck, which is not in the pattern, uh, I could just, uh, these stitches were live so I could just pick them up and knit across them. And I could pick up uh, two, every two out of three on this bit all the way up. The back stitches, I, I kept them alive on waist yarn, waist cord. And so those I just knit across. Uh, so that was all very nice. And those were choices I could make as I finished off the back and the front. Other things I did. <laughs> so I added, uh, like I said, I added the funnel neck here with a turned hem at the top. And the hem is hollow. So, and it has a couple little buttonholes here and here. So just like those sweaters that I knit for my dad and Spencer and uh, my son, they're the chimney sweater. They all have a neckline that's a little bit like this with the little buttonhole, so you can add an I-cord, which I might do. Like, I haven't decided yet, because it sits just fine without the I-cord and you don't really notice it, but I might add the I-cord. I'll have to wear it a little bit and see. But I love the funnel neck uh, as compared to the turtleneck. I'm not really a turtleneck person, so the nice thing about the funnel neck is that it's a little bit drapey and it adds a little interest to the upper portion of the sweater, since mostly your eye is drawn down here. Uh, and for me, I love sweaters that have a little bit in the back and the neck, kind of keeps me warmer. <laughs> so um, it was kind of the perfect idea for me. Now in doing this, there were obviously no instructions in the patterns. <laughs> so I picked up my stitches and I'd knit for, you know, an inch or so, and then I decreased four or five stitches. I knit for an inch or so, decreased four or five stitches. So that way the top of the funnel isn't so cowl-like and huge that it's kind of laying out on the sweater. It really is just kind of sitting nicely right around this upper part of my neck, which is where I want it. Uh, other things, I added short rows to the back of the neck, uh, and I put up a video about that so that you guys could see it. And I think you can probably see this. So see the back goes all the way up to about here, and in the front, we've got a neckline that's down here. Now I didn't necessarily need to do that on this sweater because it has this kind of um, little bit of a lower crew neck line, but I like doing it because it just makes sweaters sit better across my shoulders, so that's why I added it. Okay, then, <laughs> to continue, <laughs> this sweater was supposed to have sleeves that were knit in the flat from the cuff up. Nah, not gonna do that. So I used my trusty uh, sleeve cap method, German short rows, I picked up my stitches, I worked my sleeve cap here, and then just knit down to the cuff. Now I did that for a couple of reasons. One, I much prefer knitting sleeves that way. I just think it's it's easier than knitting them in the flat and seaming them in, but you end up with a really nicely fitted sleeve, so it looks almost like it was um, a set in sleeve. 
And number two, I only had one skein of this beautiful um, snow, I think it's called Snowfall colorway. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I had enough of it uh, to do all of this and then still have enough for the cuffs. So by knitting them top down, I could already, I knew how much I had and I knew I was gonna have enough yarn for these cuffs and for the, the turned hem that I added to the cuff. I did end up knitting the cuffs with a size six needle because color work in the round on this tiny of a circumference tends to be even tighter for me. So I went up to a size five for the body, size six for the cuffs, and that seemed to work out really well. And I did a size four, went back to a size four for the turned hem. And there's the, the pearl row for the turn, and then I just whip stitched it on the inside there. Yeah, is that everything? I think that might be just about everything. So, <laughs> moral of the story is, if you find a pattern you like, sometimes you have to just kind of make it up yourself to make it look like the picture, but not, right? Uh, and I really enjoyed, like I said, I really enjoyed this knit because I feel like I learned a lot about um, what I like. I learned a lot about um, how to do a couple of techniques that I hadn't done before. This idea of the turned hem after some color work on the bottom, the uh, kind of nice crew neck that leads into a, a funnel from the bottom up. I've, I've done this kind of neckline from the top down, but this is a different kind of construction. And yeah, uh, I just feel like there were so many little techniques in this sweater that it was really fun. I feel like I've made it mine. And I also feel like it's a sweater I'm gonna wear. And it's one of the things I'd kind of recommend is like, if you see a sweater that you like and you're following the pattern and you don't think you're gonna wear it in the end, you know, there's something about it that's like, when you try it on or when you, testing it out, you're like, ah, I really don't like the, the neckline. When I first did this neckline, it was way down here. I was like, that's not gonna work. I need it up here. So I had to, you know, take it apart and go back and fix that. And same with the ribbing on the bottom, like make those changes to your sweaters so that you'll actually want to wear them. <laughs> so that in the end, when you pull it over your head, you're like, this is a sweater that I feel comfortable in. Don't let those things slide. Don't not make those changes and then throw your sweater in a bin for years because that's what'll happen, you know? You just gotta, gotta be committed to the sweater, to figuring out the right ways to do things, even if it's frustrating, even if it's outside the pattern, even if it stretches your knowledge, especially if it stretches your knowledge. Uh, yeah, so this is the Samantha jumper. Just different, it's like 2.0, <laughs> I guess I'd say. Uh, and I should tell you, I knit this in the uh, Sweet Georgia yarn so uh, as an ambassador for them this past year, uh, actually I've been in, this is my second year as an ambassador for them. And in the first year, uh, I used some of my Sweet Georgia ambassador points money to buy this particular yarn, which is uh, BFL Silk. And it is in two different colorways. The purpley is the mulberry and the creamy white is called Snowfall. And this stuff is a DK, it's BFL and silk, 247 yards for 100 grams, uh, and DK weight yarn. It's a really beautiful, this is the extra skein I have left over. The whole sweater took me four skeins of this color and one skein of the snowfall. And <laughs> as a proud sweater knitter, I will tell you at the end, I have this much yarn left. One tiny little ball of the mulberry, and a tiny little ball of the snowfall left over after that sweater is complete. So I felt pretty good. I had this all caked up because I thought I'd need it, but I didn't. I love the way that this yarn, uh, it has this beautiful kind of luster to it because of the BFL, it's like a long wool. So, and the silk, I'm not sure if you can, the camera's not quite catching it, but it's really got a little bit of a sheen to it. That's beautiful. And I like the kind of weight of it. You can see when I was handling it, it has a nice straight, but, but it still has some structure to it and it just feels, I keep touching it, it feels so soft because of the silk mixed in. I'm really curious to see how it wears. So what I wanna do is wear it and see like what happens over here where there's a lot of kind of rubbing, you know, in your, your armpit or the side of your body. That kind of is the way to tell if, um, you know, how the yarn is gonna behave and how it's gonna wear. I have some woolen garments that wear very different than my worsted garments and I have some wool garments that wear differently than you know linen or cotton so like I said this one's BFL and silk and I'll keep you updated on how it wears I think it's going to be pretty 
pretty great because the long wool is going to have strength and so will the silk actually. Um, so I don't anticipate too much pilling at all and it's just a really comfy cozy sweater. I'll throw some pictures up here of me wearing it on our quick photo shoot. It's been super cold here for the last week and a half so uh, we went outside when it was maybe above 20 <laughs> and I was I said Spencer grab the camera let's go and I went out there and I couldn't feel my hands by the end of the uh, photo shoot so yeah, we're, we're deep in winter, but I can feel spring happening. I mean, it warmed up today. It's going to be warm the rest of the week. We finally got out and walked the dogs. It's, it's coming. It's coming. More light, more warmth, I swear. So the next segment here is a brief one, but I wanted to tell you guys that Shorn is here. And I, told, I showed you at the beginning, right? This is Shorn 3, and it just arrived. Um, we had a little bit of a shipping snafu, but we figured it out and we got all the yarn and my poor little heart didn't do too many palpitations. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, so Shorn 3, every Shorn has been different. The first one was a Cormo Corydale mix and it was a sport weight yarn, three ply. The second one was mostly Corydale with a little tease water and it was a three ply DK weight, but it had uh, beautiful grays and kind of it came out kind of like a gray oatmeal kind of color. This one is a fingering weight three ply and you can see it there. It's really soft and kind of buttery and luscious. So it, this one is Corydale mostly with a little bit of Corydale Teeswater Cross. Teeswater is a little bit of a longer stapled wool and the Corydale is a nice medium wool that is good kind of all-purpose wool. It usually wears really well and it's kind of sturdy. So the yarn is here and the next stage is to get some patterns for it. So I want to put out a call for designers and I mentioned this a couple of months ago and a couple episodes ago, but I'm putting together a call for designers that's going to go up on the blog and I'm telling you about it here and it'll, I'll put something over in the Ravelry group, a thread for you guys who want to talk about it. But I want to invite designers of all kinds. So if you're a new designer, if you're an experienced designer, if you're um, someone from the BIPOC community, if you're a designer who feels like your work hasn't had a chance to get out into the world uh, for any reason, I really would love to have your applications for this yarn for accessories that would take one or two skeins of the yarn to knit up. So I will put all the details, uh, I'll put a link down below to all the details, I'll put the details over on the blog, and if you're interested in sending me a possible design sketch and seeing if, if um, you want to be a designer for uh, some accessories for this particular yarn line. I would love to see your materials. So I look forward to hearing from lots of different designers and I do want this to be a potential like learning process, a process for, um, especially if you're a new designer, I want this to be an equitable process where uh, you're compensated fairly for your design work and all of the time and effort that you're putting into this and I want it to be the kind of um, space where I can welcome all kinds of different designers. So I do hope you'll look at the CF it's not a CFP, it's a CFD, call for designers, uh, over on the blog and submit your materials. Um, I think I'm saying the deadline is going to be March 15th and that should give you plenty of time to dream big for the shorn yarn and come up with some cool ideas for it. So the last segment of the podcast today is a giveaway and this one is actually sponsored by you guys. Those of you who have bought coffees for the um, channel. Uh, I appreciate you very much and your donations have gone toward this particular prize. Uh, and of late that Amanda and Suzanne, I just wanted to send you guys uh, an extra thank you. So Hip Strings, which is a company that I've often bought my Naturally Nazareth yarn from, uh, they were doing a moving sale, they're kind of moving shops and uh, I was over there looking at some of their yarn, which I did pick up this stuff, which is pretty interesting. This is a uh, I thought it was cool because it's a um, blend of BFL, Shetland, and Manx Lochten wool. Uh, and it is, uh, this one's a fingering weight, so I got enough for a sweater. Um, and this beautiful color, it's kind of like a brick kind of color. But I, I, I uh, recommend them because they, they have their own um, blends, they uh, do all their own dyeing, and uh, I just, I kind of have always appreciated the, the kind of indie-ness of their company. So 
they just had a sale. I think they're coming back online pretty soon. But while I was over there, and since we've been talking about men's knitting, they happen to have a copy of Rib magazine. And this is from, this is number two. And I think it came out in 2017. Mm, yes, 2017. And I picked up a copy and I want to give it away to you guys, to one of you guys. So this one has designs from, I believe, six or seven different designers. And we've been talking about men's knitwear on here quite a bit of late. And uh, it just seemed like the, the cool thing to talk about and to give away. So there's this guy, which is a beautiful um, kind of cabled um, pullover. There's some socks in here. There's another cool kind of sweater thing going on there. There's a cabled sweater. This um, issue is called Navigate and it's kind of about, uh, you know, nautical themes and things. There's a really nice shawl collar sweater for guys. There's also some socks in here, which are pretty beautiful. Some beautiful little socks in there. Uh, I think there's some fingerless mitts. There are some essays on why I knit and visible mending for a Gansey. And then I, I like the way that they've put their patterns together. They're actually pretty easy to um, read and follow and just kind of nicely put together. So this issue of Rib Magazine is up for the giveaway for anyone who would like to enter. And uh, I do have to keep it domestic because of shipping and COVID still, I know. Someday, someday we'll get back to the regular old shipping, but uh, anyone in the United States that I can ship this to, I would be happy to send it off to you. So what we'll do is uh, the regular, add a comment here over in the Ravelry thread or on the blog, uh, and maybe tell me something that you're looking forward to um, knitting in the next year, right? I mean, we have our out of my league cow going on, um, but there's plenty of other things to knit and I'd be curious to know what you're thinking about knitting for the next, for the new year, for right now. And, uh, if you leave me a comment here on the Ravelry thread or over on the blog, I will enter you to win this magazine, which I will draw for in a couple of weeks via random number and ship it off to you. So good luck and thank you all for donating coffee so that I can start um, building up some fun prize stashes for uh, everyone. And then for those of you who are going to be in the out of my league Cal Mal, which is going on over in the Ravelry group. And you can uh, head over there and leave your finished objects and I'll start doing prize draws um, throughout the year. So it should be kind of fun. I think I think that's it for today. So it was lovely to hang out with you guys. I wish you a lot of happy knitting hours in your future and warmer temperatures and sunlight and all the good things of spring. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Take care. Mm -hmm.